Hey everyone, Cynix here, and I think it's time to discuss some more design theory. Today we're taking everything back to the basics and talking about visual libraries. Anyway, if you don't know what a visual library is, that term refers to all accumulated visual data that exists inside your brain. The most exciting part of visual libraries is that no two are the same. From the moment you're born, everything you see is compiling a visual library that is unique just to you. So why is this visual library stuff so incredibly important for an artist? Well, as a creator, the first lesson you should learn about creating things is that creativity doesn't exist. Okay, that sounded a bit too dramatic. Creativity exists, but not in the metaphysical sense that you might have thought it does as a child. Your brain is simply not capable of creating something that is not some amalgamation of things it has already stored. You can try your hardest to create some gibberish, if that makes you feel better, but even your concept of gibberish is already determined by your brain. Don't get too discouraged by your physical shackles just yet though. Remember what I said earlier about visual libraries? You will still always be a unique and beautiful snowflake in the art world because of your distinct visual library. Our goal now is to just make sure we live up to our potential and also cultivate our visual library in the most productive way for whatever our goals might be. Alright, let's discuss some important layers to visual libraries. Of course we have our personal visual libraries, but there is also something important that we can call the collective visual library. This just refers to all aspects of the visual library that are universally shared by most of society. If I make an amazing design for a cool new car, it only works as a design if it fits into the collective library of what people perceive a car to be. This contains aspects of functionality as well as aspects of conformity. Of course, the goal of a good designer is to function on the edge of the collective library and keep expanding the collective perception outward slightly. So we can talk about personal visual libraries and collective visual libraries as something that every person has, but as an artist, we can also subdivide your visual library into a hard visual library and a soft visual library. Your soft visual library consists of everything you've seen and are capable of identifying or relating visually in some capacity. Your hard visual library is limited to things that you can actually recreate with some level of accuracy through drawing or painting or whatever. For a quick example, we all could probably identify Nicolas Cage if we saw him at our local supermarket, but chances are, if we had to draw him without any reference, we might find it quite difficult to get a decent likeness. You could probably even apply this to a self-portrait. If you've never drawn one before and had no mirror or photo to go off of, you might find it to be far more challenging than you would expect. Then again, if you have drawn one before, it might not be too bad. That's just because the most reliable way to store something in your hard visual library is to draw it. The more you draw something, the more solid it becomes in your library. This is certainly one of the important things to understand about your visual library. One other note about this, our hard visual library is usually filled with iconography. As children, we store letters, numbers, and all sorts of basic symbols. Even as artists, iconography can be an effective way to fill our hard visual library early on. It translates common objects into two-dimensional forms. We generally associate iconography with anime art, but really all art and artists use some level of iconography. Ideally, we move on from storing 2D objects in our visual library and start filling it with more complex three-dimensional objects and forms. Now that we have some understanding of what visual libraries are and different aspects of them, we can discuss how we cultivate them and utilize them effectively. Let's go back to our soft visual library. Once again, this is just everything you've ever seen. The soft library is incredibly important for exploring new design ideas and innovating versus the hard library, which is more important for illustrating and rendering accurately. If you want to be a great designer, it's going to be important that you feed your visual library as many diverse things as you can. The key to a healthy visual library diet is really just diversity. Every time you view something unique or interesting, you strengthen your artistic potential. So while it's not nearly as productive as, say, actually drawing, even playing video games will passively strengthen your visual library. Having said that, playing the same thing over and over again does become a bit of a waste. It's also important to seek out media that has high artistic value to it. 
whether that value comes from craftsmanship or uniqueness. Now, if you just want to play fun games, that's fine, but it is great if you can get something artistically beneficial out of them too. At the end of the day, it is just a supplement to artistic growth, not even close to the driving factors. But you'll probably get a little burnt out if you're just grinding at art all the time, so let's just talk more about these supplements. Traveling is one of the greatest ways to passively expand your visual library. It's an endless exposure to new visual stimuli. Of course, that's expensive, so watching movies is pretty good too. I personally love movies, and if you can expand your horizons past the current Hollywood blockbusters, you'll find all sorts of delicious visual content out there. Of course, if your goal is to just level up as quickly and efficiently as possible, the only thing you really need to be binging on is art. Now, any art might do, but since art is generally a progressive form of everything that came before it, current artists might make for the best diet. So get on your art stations and your Instagrams and everything else you can think of on a daily basis. Feast on as much art as you can. When I was trying my hardest to improve, I spent most of the time I wasn't drawing simply browsing through art. Anyway, television and anime are also valuable. Just make sure you avoid reality shows and cliche nonsense. Theoretically, I guess books can also have a great influence on your visual library in the softest sense possible. Just kind of clouds of ideas that are unrecognizable visually, but hugely influential on idea formation. And I think books are actually a good way to bridge ourselves into the next topic, because books are actually a test of our current visual library. Every book you read will produce some level of visualization in your head. And that visualization is entirely formed by your current visual library. Chances are, a strong visual library can lead to an enhanced reading experience. But while that might give you some sense of your visual aptitude, the true test of your visual library will come from the formation of objects from abstract shapes. I'm a big fan of artistic Rorschach tests. If you've ever watched my paint explorations, you probably know that. It's quite enjoyable to test out your visual library by creating a certain level of chaos. This chaos can be used in more subdued ways, of course. For instance, when you design anything, you should always be using thumbnails. Drawing small and fast creates enough subtle confusion to trigger your soft visual library. Good designs are never planned out ahead of time. They're always stumbled into by making observations and iterations. Even the tightest designers, such as a Scott Robertson, will still use their visual library to craft iterations on designs that apply aspects of the soft visual library over those tightly rendered ideas. Once again, the key to being a good designer is utilizing both the soft and hard aspects of your visual library. At the end of the day, that just means knowing how to embrace chaos and control chaos. I haven't actually talked too in depth about cultivating your hard visual library yet, but in short, just do studies. Lots and lots of studies. Studies of photos, studies from life, and most importantly, studies of other artists. Anytime you see a drawing you really like or a design that just captivates you, you should always show your love by doing a study of it. Always try to transition your favorite aspects of your soft visual library into your hard visual library. And again, the only way to do that is by making a study. This is also how you cultivate a style. You find things that you enjoy and you cement them as strongly as you can into your hard visual library. While we all have our very distinct soft visual libraries, our personal style in the art world is formed quite strongly by our hard visual library. There's really no great mystery to style. For instance, if you decide that you really want to be able to draw like a mix between Craig Mullins and Dr. Seuss, then you just fill one sketchbook with Craig Mullins studies, one sketchbook with Dr. Seuss studies, all the while still grinding away on your fundies and imaginative drawing. Your hard visual library will become so entrenched with this specific imagery that it will definitely affect everything you draw. Now, if your goals are a bit more practical and say you just want to be a cool mech designer, then you just need to fill your hard visual library with plenty of machinery, joints, and widgets, and whatnot, and most importantly, with a bunch of cool mech studies that will also get you well on your way. In no time at all, you'll be compiling all sorts of interesting mech ideas, all unique to you and your distinct visual library collection. 
There's just one last thing I really want to reiterate, and that is no matter how crazy good your hard visual library gets, always remember to incorporate those elements of chaos and limitation that trigger the softer aspects of your library. That's the only way that you can really keep expanding your bubble of creativity outwards and not get locked inside it. Kim Jong Yi probably has the most beastly hard visual library of any artist. While the hard library of most people might just resemble an old cardboard box filled with outdated issues of TV Guide and a soggy copy of Gravity's Rainbow, Kim Jong Yi's hard visual library looks more like the Citadel from Game of Thrones. Although, while that works extremely well for his purposes, and most illustrators should probably aim for that, he probably isn't someone you would hire as a designer, because his workflow leaves little room for chaotic exploration. It would, of course, be fun to see him engage the fuzzier side of design sometime, but I don't think he's really interested that much. Alright, I think that's going to be it for my little video on visual libraries. I hope you can take something away from it. If not, well, at least you saw something new today. Thank you all so much for watching. I tried to make this a fairly unique video, so please share it somewhere if you enjoyed it. I don't think many people search for visual library talks on YouTube. Anyway, as always, a huge thank you to all of my lovely patrons for supporting this channel. You guys are wonderful. See you, everyone.